Welcome back. Our guest on this episode is a Nigerian native who has positioned herself as one to watch on the African music landscape. Let's make welcome the singer and a songwriter who is currently working on an awesome album, Marani K. Marani K. Hi. I'm for you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay, Marani K. Yes. What does that mean? Um, Marani K means. Um... You just said Marani K. Mm -hmm. But I said Marani K. Yeah. So. <laughs> Is it pronounced Morenike or Marenike? Morenike is my actual name. Morenike okay. is my stage name, like David and Marenike. Davido. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> right. Why? How? I mean, the pronunciation is different, right? Mm -hmm. Marenike. Mm -hmm. So, what were you trying to achieve? Um, because living in Atlanta, people always want to call me more Nike. Mm -hmm. Just right off the bat. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And just being an artist, that more Nike. Nike. More Nike. <laughs> yes, yes. I've literally been at places, performances where people have called me more Nike, mm -hmm. and um, like people walk up to me. And again, it's because that whole thing about being black mm -hmm. and then being obsessed with sports. Mm -hmm. So people think that your parents really named you Nike, like more Adidas, Nike. because black oh. people are obsessed with sports. Mm -hmm. So I, I like, okay, I'm going to be an artist. I have to just shut that down. And I would have to tell people like, oh, you know. And then most people couldn't say more any care, you know. And I don't know why because even my mom is ethic. Everybody on her side can never pronounce Morenike properly. Like really? none of my Igbo friends can pronounce Morenike properly. Yes. I'm Igbo. They always find it so hard. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, okay, if y'all have such a hard time and Yoruba people can say it properly, let me just make something easy for everyone. Let's just make it Morenike. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's pretty much right. That's how the story came about. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So when did you start doing music? I've been doing music for like, I think it's about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. I recorded my first demos when I was about 15 years old. But professionally, I want to say maybe five, six years. Mm -hmm. um, I, it was when I went to college that I really started like going and meeting with labels in Atlanta. Because um, I went to college in Boston, but all the labels I was meeting with um, was in Atlanta. So I had to like literally fly from Boston to Atlanta like twice a month for like maybe a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about your style of music and general music. What yes. kind of music does Moreni K um, do? Moreni K. <laughs> <laughs> I make um, Afro merge music. Okay. And it's pretty much a combination of Afro pop, neo soul, you know, some electronica influences, and some adult contemporary. It's just mm -hmm. a mashup of different things. Okay. okay. Yes. I mean, everybody gets inspired by something, right? Or exactly. Someone, so yeah. what inspires you? Um. Just like being able to witness my, my, my dad actually owned one of the first record labels back in the day called African Involved. So he develops like Daddy Shoki and Julius Agu you can say and Larry Wo, uh, Femi Lassade. Okay. Yes. So um, back then, just being able to be around that, he developed Plantation Boys. They shot their first video in my, in my house, you know. So just being able to see that and see like, the root of how everything you know is is started as an artist it was just very intriguing to me and um yeah i was able to take those influences that i had from him growing up and then like all the other musical styles that i was exposed to mm -hmm. and put it together and you know not for much interesting what's your ideal Thank you. way to relax in lagos because I, I i can imagine lagos is hot and hectic for you yeah i don't think i can say it on camera <laughs> That's right, that's right. That's right. So okay. Issue without regulators. <laughs> right. Let's, now I'm let's imagining. Let's your music. <laughs> you yeah. It's good. It Living in the imagination is good. Yes, 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 yes. Can't yes, you yes, censor yes. it? You just give yes. us a tip. What do you do exactly to relax? Oh. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she demonstrated it. She, she said it. Gotta keep it classy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> so that's how you relax. Yes, that's how I relax, definitely. Mostly. Mostly, yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So how's the music been for you? <laughs> <laughs> Acceptance of your music, um, the the popularization of your music, how's it been? It's been definitely really interesting. I always tell the time that you know making music in Lagos, and especially if you're not doing like stuff that everybody's doing, it's very polarizing. Some people absolutely hate it. Some people, you know, love it, and you know, you just kind of have to be self-assured in what you're doing because. Yeah. Throughout the entire day, people's opinions will change. Like, I've been to meetings where people are like, oh, this is horrible, this is trash, like, what is this? And then literally the next meeting, this is amazing, this is innovative, what is this? You know, so it's, it's always varied, it's always different. So much so, like, I don't even try to put too much, like, 
stuck in the negative reactions. You know, I just, I literally only acknowledge neutrality or positivity. Right. <laughs> because, because you did mention Neo Soul. Yeah. I mean, not, not everybody in this climb appreciate Neo Soul music, but that's that's good music. Yeah, yeah. it is. And so do, do feel, yeah, do you right feel pressure at any point in time to change your style of music, your form of music, just to, um, just to fit in? Definitely. Yeah. Um, definitely. Um, I, I, I had to really, I guess, draw from my Nigerian experience mm -hmm. um, a lot to so I can connect to people because um, you know I just didn't I didn't have like the typical like upbringing like a lot of like my friends and stuff had yeah. you know so um, yeah I've had to just really dig deep and you know dig into my influences like my parents and like the people around me for inspiration and just even helping me like point me in the right direction like what are Nigerians listening to what are Lagosians like loving that kind of informs like the direction I'm I'm going to go. Oh, are, are, you, are you back home? Are you back home finally to stay? You've been in diaspora for a, a bit, if I should say that, for a while. So are you back I'm home? Yeah, but I come and go all the time. So like okay. I'm here for like three months, and I'm there for three months, and I'm here for three months, and I'm there. So, so like I've been what, here. What would you say your perception of the Nigerian music industry is? It's actually just really interesting to see how things have developed okay. you know I say all the time like um, we have so many amazing pioneers and so many people that have done like really great things for the industry um, like starting from like I always say all the time Whiskey's first album classic Nigerian Music Hall of Fame is gonna be on there Don Jazzy I consider a freaking legend so mm -hmm. you know um, it's, and also the alternative space right now, I consider myself an Altair artist, and you know, alternative artists are really just you know, having their moments, mm. and that's really amazing to watch. Nanso Amadi, Yano Dunsi, and Ajay Butter 22, and like, people that I love, Show Them Camp, are really just having a moment right now. So it kind of just feels like this is the right time to be different, I guess, in the Nigerian scene. If you're going to do it, I guess just do it now. <laughs> so you, you, just mentioned, you just mentioned four Altair music people. Yes. I want to assume those are your favorite, isn't it? Yes, I mean, I listen to alternative Monsa music Amali, a lot. Yes. Um, Show Them Camp. Yes, yes, Adia yes. Burna Boy, Adia Boy, Adia Boy, Adia Boy, yeah, I love it. I okay, since we're talking about the music industry now, let's talk about the support you get from other people in the industry. Yeah. Has it been, have, yeah. have people been really supportive or you're just doing your own thing and you think everybody's just doing their own thing? Um, I wouldn't say people have been, I wouldn't say people have been supportive necessarily. I mean, because like, you know, when I show up for interviews and stuff, like, you don't, you don't really know me. And I don't think it's necessarily the, the Nigerian way to like, like, I don't know, put an arm out, you know, I just have not received that reception. Like, oh, we think this is, even like people who are like, oh, we, like, we think your music is great. But like, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I would call that like an embrace though. I don't think I was like embraced, you know, but you just have to keep going regardless. And that, how does that make you feel? <laughs> no ways. Okay. No ways. It doesn't bother you? It doesn't bother you. It doesn't you. bother you. Great. What are you currently working on? What should we expect? Um, so today we actually just dropped um, the single produced by Cobams um, called Feel Alive. And it's really great because I've been trying to work with Cobams for years since I was 15. It was a person that I wanted to take my demos to because at that time there, were, there weren't any alternative artists. It was just like everybody else and what Cobams was doing. Mm. So I'm like, okay, if anyone's going to understand what I'm doing, he's going he's gonna to get it. And the day of my meeting with him, we found out that he had moved to the US like the day before. So what's crazy is those demos I wanted to give him when I was 15 are the demos that literally ended up with him this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he got them, but he called me and is like, I think you're really talented. Like, wow. you're an amazing songwriter. I love your voice. Like, we need to work. Great. So I literally flew down to Houston and we worked on the single for like two days. And yeah. How did that make yeah. you feel? When you it was just call? really, like, that's somebody that I look up to. That's mm -hmm. somebody, like, I idolize. So that is somebody that I was like, oh, my God. Cobams thinks I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a great yeah, writer. <laughs> this is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, but also, that's why, like, the non-embrace, I guess, of other people doesn't necessarily bother me because it's not like you're somebody whose opinion I respected anyways. Mm. You, do you understand what I'm saying? Oh. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you're not somebody that like I respect your opinion. Like I wasn't looking towards you for validation mm. anyways. But for somebody like Cobams who I've loved since, not only have I loved Cobams' music, I've loved all of his artists, Bez, you know, Zuchi Adaya is still one of my favorite songs of all, all right. time. And um, yeah, it, it was just, it was life changing for me. It was amazing. If you have to work with any female artist in Nigeria, who would it be? Oh my god, I want to work with Tenny so bad. Mm -hmm. I met her three years ago, actually. Her manager at the time um, got in contact with like my assistants, and then we ended up in a writing session. 
and she was just really sweet, really awesome. You could tell that she was really talented, just right out of the out of the gate, out of the jump. I'm like, oh, okay, this girl is special. Like, there's there's definitely something here. Mm -hmm. So, fast forward three years later, and like she's blown up. Like, mm -hmm. that's just amazing to watch, and it's mm -hmm. so inspirational. Have you so, tried yeah. like contacting us so you guys would put out some music? We for actually us. have been in contact, and um, it's been very interesting. She has a lot going on, and um, we just need to find the right song that works sure. for her. Besides Tenny, so well. yeah. Um, Tenny, Niniola, I love her as well. I think Afro House, what she did for Afro House in mm. Nigeria is revolutionary. It was mm -hmm. amazing. No one else was doing this. Yeah. So I have so much respect for that. You know, Siva Savage, who is like the queen, who I love. Mm -hmm. Classically trained artist, has worked with everyone. And that's what I love about Siva. Like, she really paid her dues. Like, she paid all her dues before she came to Nigeria and just completely blew us away. Like, literally. Mm -hmm. Yes, literally. <laughs> I like, when so. you listen to you talk, for me, I get the vibe that you've been following the industry each step like yeah. you know what everybody has brought to the table and how it is well, working. Home, like you were born in the industry yeah. yeah i mean it's just really important so that you can figure out what space you're going to create what mm. lane you're going to create where you're going to fit in you know if for example i didn't know there were alternative artists i wouldn't even have known that there was a place for me to be able to do what i do mm -hmm. so it's very very important to educate yourself on the music industry and the music business and then you, you also say your father's musical influence also i mean did influence you. And yes, it, it did. Like my dad just being exposed to everything, you know, and he could play so many different musical instruments growing up. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like that was definitely a really uh, formative experience for me. Mm, would you okay. say you um, understand the business side of it as well, also? I definitely say I had to learn, though. Okay. I, I had to learn about contracts and royalties and why those things are important and mm -hmm. publishing and where to go. Yeah. So it's just so much more to it and I'm self-managed right now. Mm -hmm. So I've had to really be in the business, like the last single we dropped, Vibes, I talk about it all the time, like that was the first that I literally had no help. So I hired everybody, mm -hmm. put together rehearsals, paid everybody, that that was like, my real like experience, so now no one can tell me anything because like I've done it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. And I think my final question for you will be: Is, is would you say music? Your music is paying the bills as expected. Yeah. My music is not paying the bills as expected. I have a clothing line. I'm um, called Makan Giddin, and that is paying the bills as expected. Okay. But um, of course, I still get support from my family and um, clothing line music. here in Nigeria. It's like online clothing line. We don't ship to Nigeria. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You don't ship to Nigeria. Nigeria. Wow. Who Why? ships to Nigeria? Does ASO ship to Nigeria, please? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. like on me, like, oh my God, you don't ship to Nigeria. Like, no, who ships to Nigeria? Nobody ships to Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I wanted to order Forever 21 right now, they would not ship it to me here in Lagos. So, so. are you planning to bring that business to Nigeria? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to, how to really make it work. Because of being focused on music, I can't even like run my business 100% of the time. When I'm away, you know, I have to have like maybe like quick little sales, shut it down, be here, do this, go back, reopen it, you know. So it's it's just a lot of juggling right now. It's the most yeah. populous nation in Africa. You don't think your clothing line has a market here? No, I absolutely do yeah. think it has a market here. I, Never said that. You're not just ready to tap into <laughs> I'm that market. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that for us to do that here in the way that it should be done, it's yeah. going to take a lot of work. You need to, mm. you know, because mm. we're exclusively online. So to even go from online to flagship uh, in a completely different country, mm. that's like a huge undertaking. So I just want to be in the right place and be prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you prepared to sing for us? Because I'm telling you something was up. Right now, sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What would you like? Anything? Anything. Um, I'm just going to sing vibes. Um, Cause the vibes feel right What's it gonna take for you to come out tonight? Anywhere I day, anywhere I day, anywhere I day See the vibes feel right What's it gonna take for you to come out tonight? Hey, what's it gonna take for you? Okay, okay amazing. <laughs> that's beautiful. And that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, Thank you can catch you. up on all live streams content by subscribing to our YouTube channel across TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always well to my co anchors, Benny Yak and Ewa Rory, to the entire production team, and of course, our studio guest, Marie Kay. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for watching and see you later.